think I carry four phones on me at all times for fun, Chris. Rishi, in your case, I think you actually do carry four smartphones for fun all the time. How do you not leave those in restaurants and Ubers like daily? I did leave one in an Uber actually. <laughs> Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today's video is a little bit different. Now, of course, we've got the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro. These are brand new smartphones on the market. They do amazing stuff in terms of photography, but there are things that you might not understand or may have missed, so we want to cover that for you. And to help us out today, we have Rishi Sanyal from DeepReview.com. And Jordan is here, of course, as well, shooting on an iPhone 11. Okay, so to start off, Rishi, we should really talk about the fact that the 11 and 11 Pro have brand new sensors with better focus, right? Right, so the main camera module on both the 11 and the 11 Pro, uh, now Apple claims has 100% focus pixels. Um, it seems to be a dual pixel design, which means split photodiodes, and which gives you better focus, better focus in, especially in low light. The 11 Pro does feature a two times telephoto lens, roughly 50 millimeter equivalent. Uh, 52 actually. Okay, so I said roughly, he's gonna be accurate on that. But we're also gaining on the 11 and the 11 Pro a brand new lens, it's the ultra wide. What's the focal length on that? 13 millimeters okay. equivalent. And then we have our standard wide angle lens. So the main camera on here, the 26 millimeter one, has an f1.8 lens on it. Okay. And it's got the biggest sensor on here, one over 2.55 inch type. And that's gonna get you the best image quality. Okay. The telephoto lens has an f2.0 aperture, which is brighter than the f2.4 aperture that was on the 10s. So that gives you better low light performance. And um, the ultra wide camera has an f2.4 aperture on it, which is a little dimmer. Um, so it might give you a little more trouble when you're shooting low light. Gotcha. And then also keep in mind that both the telephoto and the ultra wide modules have a considerably smaller sensor than the main camera. Uh, it's a one over 3.6 inch type as opposed to the one over 2.5 right. inch type. So it's not gonna give you as good uh, dynamic range, noise performance, and low light image quality as the main camera okay. would. And we're not gonna talk about too much, but we should also point out that the selfie camera has a larger sensor as well this time around. And just for the purpose of the video, we're gonna to refer to the ultra wide as the 0.5 lens, the normal main camera as the one times lens, and then the telephoto as the two times lens. So of course, having this new ultra wide 0.5 lens is, is awesome. It gives us a new perspective to play with. I think landscape guys are gonna love it. It's not so great for close up because you can't autofocus the lens. It's one downside, but it does give us another neat advantage. So iPhones haven't really had the ability to do their portrait mode where you get a depth map and a soft background with the main wide angle lens until you know the 10R. That was really the first one to feature that. But now on the iPhone 11 Pro, having that ultra wide lens means that we have two lenses next to each other, giving us stereoscopic information, a lot like how our own eyes work. And that means that the 11 Pro can build more accurate depth maps. You can do portraits with the main wide angle lens and get just better results, right? Yeah, and the 11 also has this ability and mm -hmm. I just love it because I love wide angle portraits. I love environmental portraits. And the other cool thing is you can even take shots, like action shots of your kid running around because that main camera is so good. The image quality is so good. The focus is so good that having that married with the blurry backgrounds gives you just beautiful shots, mm. family shots, pet shots, environmental portraits. Okay, so the iPhone 11 lets us do wide angle portraits, but the iPhone 11 Pro does also let us do telephoto portraits. So this does still use the same stereoscopic effect using the main lens and the telephoto lens, and it works very well, giving you that more compressed look, but there are some issues with that, right, Rishi? Yeah, I've been finding that as soon as light levels drop, the camera has trouble focusing. So even mm. if, though it's got that F2 aperture to let in more light, I love that, um, it doesn't seem to to really help with the autofocus. One thing to keep in mind is when you switch to portrait mode, it automatically defaults to the 2X lens. So if you want the wide angle portraits, then just tap on 2X to go to 1X, and now you got your wide angle lens with portrait mode. Okay, you gotta make sure to do that. Yeah, you gotta do it every single time. Uh, a new feature is um, the ability to shoot with multiple cameras every time you're taking a photo. So when you're shooting with the 2X lens, um, the 1X camera is also firing, and when you're shooting with the 1X camera, the ultra-wide lens is also firing, um, and that allows them to capture information outside of the frame, which then gives you this really cool ability when you're editing photos to uh, use extra information from outside of the frame. So let's say you have a tilted horizon, right? Mm. Usually when you rotate that back to straighten it, you, you crop. have to crop in, right? Mm. But since you have information outside of the frame, there's no need to crop. You can actually rotate, you can shift perspectives, you can right. tilt for uh, buildings and 
with a lot of distortion. Could um, you zoom out just to get a wider frame after the out. fact? Absolutely, right. yeah. So when it merges these photos together, if you asked for a perspective shift or to zoom a little bit wider, do you get a little bit of weirdness around the edges? Can you see the difference? Well, there's a point at which it transitions from one lens to the other lens, and when you're transitioning from that point, let's say on the 1x lens to information from the ultra-wide lens, the in information from the ultra-wide lens has to be somewhat magnified to get everything looking right. Right. Um, but Apple does a really, really good job at, uh, at merging that. You can't even, it's hard to see where that transition even happens. And you got, sure, you get a little bit of dip in image quality at the edges, but really, I don't think anyone's going to care and they're just going to appreciate the ability to do these edits. Now, when you want to make all these changes to perspective or fix a wonky horizon or whatever, it looks like they actually have a really nice, robust editing suite in these phones. Yeah, it's new um, and it's just so intuitive to use and it's coming to the older iPhones as well, which okay. is really nice. There's actually an auto mode. So if you just hit the crop tool, you can hit auto and it does it automatically for you. Everything for you. And it does it really well. Now, if someone's trying to decide between the iPhone 11 and then the 11 Pro, it's not just the 52 millimeter lens that we're gaining with the Pro, we're gaining something else that's very important too. Yeah, I would argue probably even more important. On the 11, the display is an LCD display. On the 11 Pro, you get an OLED display, which just gets you darker darks, deeper blacks, and brighter highlights. The iPhone XS was somewhere around 7 to 800 nits. Um, this phone, the 11 Pro, can go up to 1200 nits brightness, and that's really important for HDR photos and HDR video viewing. Right, now this is something that really brings up a lot of confusion, right? Because phones have been shooting HDR modes for a long time. So the philosophy behind HDR photos uh, is to capture a wide dynamic range, closer to what we see with our eyes, right? right? And to do that, you capture multiple frames, bright frames, dark frames, and you fuse them together. But to display them on standard displays or SDR displays, just your typical LCD monitor or old phone displays of the past, you'd have to compress that range to make them viewable on those devices. But with the advent of newer displays like the OLED on this, which has very, very bright brights and very, very dark darks, you no longer have to compress it into this small range and create a flat looking image. Instead, you can re-expand that range to take advantage of the full range of that display and get a much more realistic image display that looks more like the real world. This is the HDR photo, and this is where it's off. And the HDR photo is just so much more compelling because of those bright brights and dark darks. It's also cool to see that in Hollywood, cinematographers are using formats like Dolby Vision, HDR Video, HLG, to take their work and stretch out that dynamic range, unpack it, and show the end user a more positive experience, right? So it's cool to see that Apple's now doing this for us photographers. Okay, so we want to talk about the iPhone's night mode next, but I guess we should kind of wait till it's nighttime. Yeah, it's not so dark. Yeah. All right, well, let's go grab, I don't know, one, two, or six drinks, and then we'll uh, continue our video. Okay, Rishi, so we're out here. It's clearly nighttime, a little cold. <laughs> we got a beautiful view behind us. So for night photography, when we did our review for the Google Pixel 3, I fell in love with the night sight mode. Right, and so the iPhone is now uh, offering its own night mode. Okay. Night mode. Uh, it does it differently from what you're experienced with on the Pixel phone. Um, it uses what's called adaptive bracketing, okay. which means that it can use different shutter speeds based on what it is sensing. So if you have movement in the frame, it will take some exposures with shorter shutter speeds, so it can use some frames where the motion is frozen, and then it will take some longer shutter speeds as well to make sure that you get these areas of the scene that are static uh, in very good quality. Does this adaptive bracketing ever cause any issues? And interestingly enough, if you're shooting someone moving some motion in the scene, you might end up getting results where there's more noise in a person's face, for example, because it were, there's moving and it uses a shorter speed for the person's face, but a longer shutter speed for everything else. Okay, so this is a big improvement over the iPhone 10 because it didn't have night mode and it does suffer a little bit as we can see here. It's pretty rough. Yeah. So this is a big improvement on the 11s, but people are going to want to know how does this compare against the other big player, which is the night side. Night side on the Google Pixel 3. So here you go. Let's just play it out. Right? You carry both phones. It's really interesting, in these very, very low light levels, the iPhone is doing a better job than the Google's night sight. The Google Pixel is, is kind of taking a compromise and saying, well, based off the motion of my scene, I'm going to use this shutter speed, but take X number of up to 15 frames and merge them together. 
Right, but it can't use slower shutter speeds than that to help reduce the noise, like right. especially in the sky here where we're not getting a lot of movement. It's quite yeah. interesting. The key thing we have to remember is that the more stable you can keep either smartphone, the better the results you're going to get. You give them more frames that are usable to then pull from. Exactly. But I would also say this, so night sight mode in more moderate light, you took some samples earlier, we looked at those, and that seems to have the edge. And I think the other thing we have to remember is that Google Night Sight isn't just doing low light performance, it's also doing their super res mode. Right? Exactly. It means that you have 15 frames and you get little movement in between frame to frame so you can get interpixel detail that gives you super resolution. It even gives you color information for sure. Pixel pixel. So that gives you a better low light as well as mid light as well as daylight image quality. And that's a big point is I can choose to use night sight anytime I want. Even if it's bright daylight, I can choose to engage it. You mentioned that it's not always available on the iPhone. So you can see right here it's very dark. So night mode is actually activated. You can see it by this yellow icon. It's saying I'm going to take a three second exposure. So if you take this, it's going to be a long exposure. But it's not always available. The other interesting thing to note is that night mode is not available on the ultra wide lens or the telephoto lens. However, funny thing is if I switch to the telephoto lens here, you can see it's still activated. What's going on? That's actually because it's not using the telephoto lens for the photo. It's actually using the 1x lens and cropping in. As soon as you drop, drop to the 0.5x lens, you can see night mode is no longer available. Ultra wide on the iPhone and low light is absolute dog okay? I agree. The ultra wide lens and the telephoto lens in low light isn't offering quite the image quality of the main camera, smaller sensors and, and whatnot cropping in. One thing additionally we should mention is that in low light, when it takes these night mode shots, the iPhone does not give you that full HDR display of its photos. If you take an image in night mode versus non-night mode when it offers you that option, you'll actually see that the night mode shot, while it's captured very nice tones and everything and low noise, you don't get the pop and the contrast of the HDR photos that you get normally when you're not shooting in night mode. All right, so it's getting late. We are gonna hit the sack, but we'll be back tomorrow morning. We're gonna give our final conclusions on what the iPhone 11 Pro is bringing to the table. Thanks for the fill light, Rishi. <laughs> You're welcome, that screen is pretty impressive, right? <laughs> First off, I think the iPhone 11s offer a substantial upgrade. Uh, having additional lenses not only gave us cool options to, to change perspective or fix horizons or reframe, but also uh, gives you awesome depth maps and the wide angle portraits actually were really, really impressive that you're taking. Uh, I also like the fact that we have night mode. You know, Google's night sight has been really the, the big advantage and now the iPhones are competing in that same regard. And uh, as a Samsung user and as an Android user, sometimes the camera interfaces aren't the greatest and I think Apple has a great user interface for shooting as well as now editing. That's cool to see the other phones are going to pick that up as well. I test cameras for a living day to day and the thing with these smartphone cameras that you have to keep in mind compared to regular cameras is that there's so much going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, multi-frame capture and then how, what do you do with that data to create a pleasing image. You know this is all going on in the background you don't even notice it. Um, and what that also means is that the phone does different things in different situations based on what you're pointing it at. And because of that, I've been testing these cameras extensively for the past week and a half. Hundreds of shots in many different situations, and I can confidently say that it's amazing what Apple's doing in the portrait mode where they're actually trying to simulate the characteristics and background blur of f1.4 full frame lenses. And what's really amazing in the end, the impact this camera has is viewing those results on a beautiful display that gets closer to mimicking what you see in the real world. And when it comes to video, another huge advancement is having now HDR video capable in 4K 60p. That's pretty amazing. I know you're missing Jordan, but keep in mind he shot this entire video on the iPhone 11 and there are some concerns. We did see a lot of skin smoothing during the day, which looks kind of artificial. And of course you saw in low light situation that the noise reduction kicks in and it gets pretty soft. We're definitely gonna wanna look at this in further detail, but you be the judge, let us know your comments below. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to Rishi for all your expertise. Don't forget, subscribe, Instagram, Twitter, and keep in mind that there's an exciting new smartphone coming out very shortly. So I foresee a full smartphone shootout coming up. <laughs>